going to be reviewing fractions today. So we're going to be simplifying them and then using all of our operations to solve some problems. So number one says to reduce the fraction 12 sixteenths. So we need to think of a number that can go into 12 and 16. I can see that they are both even, so I'm going to start and divide them both by two. 12 divided by two is six, and 16 divided by two is eight. I can see that these are both even again, so I need to divide them both by two again. A simpler way to do that would have been able to use the greatest common factor of those. So you can do that either way to simplify that. So to get this final answer, make sure you finish the problem. Number two asks for the reciprocal. And remember the reciprocal is when we take the fraction and flip it upside down. So our top number, the numerator will become the denominator and the denominator is going to become the numerator. So we just go ahead and flip that right on its head. Number three asks us to solve and our answer needs to be in simplest form. So we are multiplying these. Now remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply our numerators, we multiply our denominators, and then we check for any simplifying that we can do. We can also ahead of time cross simplify, but there's nothing that can go into one and two going either direction. So number four asks us to divide. When we divide, we want to copy the first one. So there's seven eighths, change our divide sign to a dot and flop. So remember two is really over one. So this turns into one over two. I can see I can't simplify one and eight. I can't simplify seven and two. So we're going to multiply our numerators multiply the denominators to get our answer there. Number five is a subtraction problem. When we are subtracting, we need common denominators. So we need to change these here. I know that three times four is 12. So that is a number that three and four can go into. It is also their least common denominator. So then to go here, we're gonna do three times nine is 27, and four times eight is 32. So now I can subtract my numerators, and my denominator stays the same, and then make sure you do any simplifying if necessary. Number six asks us to add these. I didn't change that to an add sign. I'll do that right now. So we need common denominators. So nine times five is 45. Then I can see that five times one is five. Nine times four is 36. So then we add our numerators and the denominator stays the same and then do any simplifying if necessary. Number seven asks us to multiply these. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make them improper. So to do that, we are going to do two times four is eight plus one is nine, and then our denominator stays the same, so over four, and then we're going to multiply two times three is six, plus two more is eight, and the denominator stays the same. If we look at this one here, I can see a number that goes into nine and three. So we could simplify those first. I also see a number that goes into four and eight. So we could simplify those first as well to make our problem easier. So if you do that, then you'll times your numerators and you'll times your denominators and then just double check for any simplifying that needs to be done. 
Number eight is a division problem. So the first thing we need to do again is to make them improper. So we start here, four times six is 24 plus one is 25. And our denominator stays the same. We're dividing six times one is six plus one more is seven. Our denominator stays the same. Now to divide, we need to copy dot and flop. So then we'll multiply our numerators and our denominators. But before we do that, I can see that a number can go into six and six to simplify that and make it easier to do before you do that. And then just check for any simplifying that you can do at the end. Number nine says that Connie rode the roller coaster at Lagoon. After three minutes, the ride was three fourths of the way complete. How long did the entire ride take? So I know I'm looking for a total. So my answer needs to get bigger. She's only been on the roller coaster for three minutes and it's not over. So my answer should be longer than three minutes. If I'm coming up with an answer of two and a half minutes, that doesn't make sense that she was on the ride for three, but the ride's only two and a half. So we need to think about that, getting our answer bigger. So I'm going to start with my total. And it was three fourths of the way done. Of means to multiply. So if I take my total and times that by three fourths, that's going to equal three. Now I need to get T by itself. So the opposite of times is to divide by three fourths. So if you remember, that cancels this out. And then I do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So three divided by three fourths, three is over one. So we're going to copy dot and flop there. Then I can see the threes can simplify here. And then I'll multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators, and do any other simplifying that needs to be done. Number 10, a walnut muffin calls for three-fourths cups walnuts. Mrs. Hooper wants to make one-third of that recipe. So I want one-third of her total. So three-fourths is actually the total this time. And I want to make one-third of that. What will that equal? I can see I can do some simplifying here ahead of time to make my problem even easier. All right, and number 11 today says, Bailey spent two thirds of his monthly allowance at the movie and one fifth of it on baseball cards. What fraction of the allowance is left? So before we can figure that out, we need to know how much he spent in the first place. So he did two thirds and one fifth. So we're gonna go ahead and add what he spent together. Now, when we're adding, remember we need common denominators. So three and five, when we times those together makes 15. Three times one is three, five times two is 10. So I'm done with those. So we're going to add across. So 10 plus three is 13. My denominator stays the same. Now that's how much he spent. It wants to know how much is left. So we're just going to take that he has one whole thing as his allowance, whatever that one whole thing is, and we're going to subtract 13 fifteenths. So you need to tell me how much is left to get to one whole of his allowance.